stop that? <laughs> she wins. I think this is going to be a really far out show. What are we doing here? We're making a point. And that point would be? That agriculture isn't just for Earth anymore. And? And that our director is a nutcase. Whoa! 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 Wow, I guess I shouldn't have said that. What's a lot of sweet potatoes? I say yams, because I yam what I am. Fine, so what's with all the yams? Actually, you're right, they are sweet potatoes. But in the United States, sometimes we call sweet potatoes yams. I'm still not getting the answer. Maybe we should introduce ourselves first. Oh, sorry. Hi, I'm Renee. And I'm Dr. Kim. And today we're going to talk about yams, yams in, in space. space. I thought you said these were sweet potatoes. Well, they are, but sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes in, in space. space doesn't have the same ring to it. You've got a point there, but what do yams, I mean, sweet potatoes, have to do with space? Well, astronauts have to eat something, don't they? So they eat sweet potatoes? Well, not now, but they will. Gee whiz! In agriculture. Today, we're going to look into the future and see how astronauts are going to grow yams yeah, in yeah, space. Yeah. Will you stop that? You shouldn't knock it till you've tried it. So, wouldn't you need soil and fertilizer and water and Sure, shovels? yeah, you'd need all that stuff. But let's leave some of those questions for the Gee Whiz kids. Gee Whiz kids! Gee Whiz kids! Gee Whiz kids! Whiz kids! Whiz kids! How do you eat in space? What would people eat if they lived on Mars? Green eggs and yams. <laughs> <laughs> What do space yams look like? Are they round like planets? Are space yams bigger than earth yams? Do they taste different? How did you water yam in space? Where do you grow yams in space? On a planet or a meteor? Can you make potato chips with sweet potatoes? Chips in space! Do space yams grow in space dirt? Space dirt? Who will go yams in space? Space farmers! <laughs> do aliens eat space yams? Did you eat yams? Are sweet potatoes related to couch potatoes? <laughs> <laughs> How do you grow yams in space? Gee whiz! I got a question for you, Renee. What do you think astronauts eat? Don't they eat this stuff, freeze-dried food in pouches? Well, that's what they eat now. But what if they were going to Mars? What if they were going somewhere really far away that would take years and years to get there? What if they were going to live on the moon or, or in a space station? That would be a lot of food. Plus, what if there were three or four crew members? Look at that. There's barely enough room for the astronauts because of all the stuff they have to take with them. Not just the equipment to get them into space and back, but air and water and food and lots of other things that we take for granted here on Earth, but that's not available in space. So it's kind of like taking a little piece of Earth with them. That's right. And we grow plants here on Earth, so why not grow them in space? But to grow plants, you need soil. And where would all the soil go? Wouldn't it just float away? Yeah, that's just one of the problems, and there are lots of others. Like where do they get their sunlight and all the water the plants need and the waste? Yeah, what do you do with your garbage if you're trapped in a space capsule? That's one thing that growing plants in space is really going to help with because plants are natural recyclers. You know that here on Earth, plants use our waste and our garbage as fertilizer. Plus, every time you breathe in oxygen, you breathe out... Carbon dioxide! Right, and carbon dioxide can be really dangerous to us if it were to build up. But we don't have to worry about that here on Earth because plants take up carbon dioxide and give off oxygen. So plants breathe in while we breathe out, and vice versa. Sounds like a beautiful relationship. It really is, and it works great here on Earth, so why not do it in space? It makes sense to me. Here's another question for you. If you were an astronaut in space, what would you grow? Well, I guess I would grow things that I like, but I would also grow things that would keep me healthy. Like what? Chocolate. 
Didn't think so. Darn. That's okay. We'll let Aaron ask this question of our experts that we're going to meet on Yams, Yams in, in Space. space. Look at me! I'm moonwalking on the moon! Well, sort of, if you ignore the cables. Look, Ma! No hands! Now I'm exploring deep space in search of new frontiers. Okay, so I'm really not, but a kid can dream, can he? Now I'm at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama. This is a great place to find out what it's like to be in space without ever leaving Earth. You know, there's something I've been wondering about. What are you supposed to eat out here? I mean, it's not like there's McDonald's around the next asteroid belt. Maybe I should get back down to Earth and talk to somebody who knows. Now how do I turn this thing around? Or, maybe I could do it this way. Wow. Now this is the way to travel. Now I'm at Tuskegee University in Alabama, where I can find out what astronauts are going to eat in space. Tuskegee University was founded in 1881 by Booker T. Washington for African American students. The university's most famous scientist was George Washington Carver, whose work with crops like peanuts, soybeans, and of course sweet potatoes revolutionized agriculture in the South and in the world. He came up with more than 300 different products from peanuts alone. Items like peanut butter, cooking oil, and even plastics. Because Tuskegee University is so well known for working with plants like peanuts and sweet potatoes, NASA gave Tuskegee a grant to find out the best way to grow and use these crops in space. So it makes sense why we're here at the George Washington Carver Agricultural Experiment Station to find out what makes sweet potatoes such good food for space. And this is Dr. David, our first expert on yams in space. These are not yams, these are sweet potatoes. Okay, sweet potatoes in space. Are sweet potatoes and yams from the same family? No, they are not. This is from Dioscorea, which is, this is the yam, and this is the sweet potato, and it's from Ipomia. They are two different plants. In addition, the sweet potato, we have several different kinds of sweet potatoes. And like you as a human being who has 46 chromosomes, this sweet potato has 90 chromosomes. And as a plant breeder, that's what we love because it means we can have several different kinds of sweet potatoes. One of the things we're working here at, working on here at Tuskegee is trying to increase the dry matter content of a sweet potato. Huh? Well, what's dry matter? Okay, it's all that remains in the sweet potato after we remove the water, which means it would be all the carbohydrates, the proteins, the vitamins, the fat, all of that we call the dry matter. And that's what gives us the energy. So for space, we want to have as much energy as possible from a small amount of food. So that's why we want to increase the dry matter. We also want to cross our high dry matter cultivars with those with short vines. Why? Because in space, we are limited in our growing area. So we don't want vines that are very long and trailing all over because sweet potato vines are usually long and trailing. In this way, if we cross a sweet potato that has high dry matter, with one with small vine, we may end up with the perfect sweet potato for space. I thought there was only one kind of sweet potato, the orange kind. Oh, there are several sweet potatoes. I'm sure you know this kind, as you said, it's the orange. But look at this. This is white, and it tastes almost like the white potatoes. But it just has a slight taste. And remember, earlier on, we were talking about dry matter. Well, these sweet potatoes, they have a lot of dry matter in it, as compared to this. We also have sweet potatoes that are not so orangey, but it's like pale orange and pale yellow. So there are several kinds. As I said, we have the sweet potatoes, 90 chromosomes, and that's why we have all these different colors, different variation in colors, because it has all these kinds. And we want different kinds in space, because we want the astronauts to have a variety in their diet. What are some of the other plants that are good for space travel? Well, besides sweet potatoes, we will be growing white potatoes, rice, sugar beet, and possibly peanuts. But in addition, we will be growing soybeans. As you know, if, we, if they, are, they will adopt a vegetarian diet, 
then the soya bean will become very important because that has a very high protein content. Gee whiz, I guess a yam isn't just a yam. Okay, so dining in space wouldn't be that bad after all. I like most of the things that Dr. David talked about. Plus, several of the plants that she talked about can actually be used to make other things we eat, like flour and sugar and things we eat every day. Flour, sugar, we can make cookies. <laughs> yeah, we can make cookies, we can make bread, we can make pasta, we can make lots of things that we need to have a well-balanced diet. Okay, since we know that the plants are good for space, how will they grow? That's another good question for an expert. Let's see who Aaron's got next. This is how you plant a potato on Earth. But how do you do it up there? You can't plant anything up here. And you can't plant anything on the moon either. Without air and water, the sun would just burn up the plants. So where do you plant it? Sounds like I need to get back down to Earth and ask an expert. This is Dr. Desmond Mortley, and he's an expert on growing plants in space. So, Dr. Mortley, how do you get plants to grow in space? Well, one approach that we are taking is to use what we call a hydroponic system. Now, you know that the prefix hydro means water. So what we have done is taken water and we put the nutrients that the plants would normally get in the soil back into this water and it circulates uh, continuously uh, 24 hours a day for seven days a week. Then specifically what we're using here is called a nutrient film technique. It's a form of hydroponics, but it's nutrient film technique. And as you see, we have no soil whatsoever. And you see these nice roots that the plants put out here, uh, as, which will serve as the feeder roots. And then this sweet potato roots will develop from this. Doesn't gravity affect the way they grow? Certainly. Uh, on the Earth, we have what is called 1G. But in space, we have what is called microgravity, which means then that the plants would have some problems growing in space because plants are naturally geotropic. In other words, they, they, they respond to gravity. And so the roots will normally grow towards the soil. So in space, we will have to confine them, even if we use a nutrient film technique, we'll have to confine them within a certain area so that they will grow and stay in that area. But they will still produce fruits or storage roots or whatever for the astronauts to, to have uh, food to eat. What about light? How do plants in space grow with such different light? Come with me. Wait, wait. Allow me. Thanks, that saves a lot of walking. This is what I was telling you about as far as the light is concerned. Now, light is very important in the growth of the plant because the plant uses that in combination with carbon dioxide gas from the year and the green color in the plant that is called chlorophyll. The plant uses that to make its food or through the process of what is called photosynthesis. So light is very important. Would sweet potatoes taste different in space? I don't believe they will taste any different uh, because the taste of the sweet potato will depend on what you treat it with in terms of the, the, the amount of nutrition that you give it. But generally, they should taste the same as they do on Earth here. Are they a different shape? Uh, we believe they will also be shaped the same as on Earth because the shape depends or it is a function of the medium in which it's grown. So if you're gonna grow it in our nutrient film technique here, then the shape will be the same, as well as if you grow it in a lunar soil or some other medium. So it depends on the medium in which it's grown in. So that's how they grow sweet potatoes in space. But what do they do with all the leftovers? Like this. Especially if you're way up here. What I need now, is a trash can in space. Space, 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 or a hefty bag in space, or something. Sounds like a question for another expert on yams, yams in space. space, 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 space. <coughs> Sorry they make me say that. This is Dr. Trotman, and I think she can tell me what to do with all this stuff. Can't we just throw it away? We couldn't open the window in the first place to throw it out in space. 
And there is no gar garbage collection in space, so where would it go? So what we do is we take these portions of the plant that one normally wouldn't eat, and we recycle it. The fibrous roots, as well as the green leaves, which can also be used for food, and the senesced leaves. Senesced leaves? We get sugars from recycling it, which we can use in food preparation, and we can also use the recycled material to grow sweet potato plants. And what we do in this lab is recycle sweet potato plants. We use microorganisms to recycle plant material. There is the senesced leaves, which are the golden leaves that are the dying parts of the plant. Oh. And we've got green leaves. These can also be recycled by using them as food. And we've got fibrous roots, and these are not going to be edible. So in this lab, we reclaim the nutrients from the inedible parts of the plant. What we would do, we would grind the harvested material, those portions that are not going to be eaten, and then we would sieve it. Would you like to do some sieving? Sure. We then take the sieved material and we put it into jars. We use the, these jars so that we can autoclave them, and that's to sterilize the material because there are microorganisms everywhere. And we want to be sure that the microorganisms that are degrading are the ones that we've placed in there because these are organisms that we have studied and we have determined that they've got the ability to degrade the parts of the sweet potato plant. We use two kinds of mechanisms to do the recycling. We use aerobic, where we have oxygen in the system, and we use anaerobic means to degrade. The microorganisms that are aerobic require oxygen to do their work, and those that are anaerobic, oxygen is then deleterious. It will kill those organisms. So we have to prevent oxygen from being in those systems. In those reactions, what we do is we put nitrogen gas into the system. So the system that I'm talking about is a bioreactor. And this is a small example of a bioreactor, OK? Here, if we do some shifting of our stuff, we've got here a liquid medium and the sieved sterilized material in here. Then we would have grown up the microorganism that we are interested in and we would inoculate that into this bioreactor. Inoculate? When you add bacteria to anything, you are inoculating it. Cool. Once the degradation has occurred, we go in and we siphon off the liquid portion in the bioreactor, and we re use that to grow plants. And we're going to go and see those plants growing. Also, we look at the nutrient solution where the plants are growing because, you know, you saw earlier that it was a hydroponic system that we yeah. used. So we want to be sure that there aren't additional microorganisms in there. So we do that by using plates. And we inoculate these plates with samples of the nutrient solution, and we look to see what grows on the plates. For example, you may have organisms such as these growing on the plates. Mm. And then, in order to characterize them, we use the microscope to do that. What we can do is go to see the plants growing in this biodegraded effluent. All right. Oh, hold on. I've got a better way to get there. No, let's walk. All right. Come on, Aaron. Let's look at how these plants actually grow in the biodegraded stuff. Here, we're growing plants in the regular solution, which is the modified half hoaglands. And in these two, we have the biodegraded material that we looked at in the lab where we used microorganisms to degrade that um, plant biomass. Look at the plants. Can you tell the difference? Not really. I think they all look the same to me. Yeah, that's what we want to see. And as long as we have lots of storage roots, as well as aerial biomass, we'll be happy. So in this way, we use every portion of the sweet potato plant in producing food and recycling materials in space. So I guess just about every part of the sweet potato plant can be useful. Well, that's what we're continuing to work on. And then the next thing you want to see is how you can eat this stuff. We know that space travel could take months, even years. So it's important that space food is not only good for you, but it has good taste and provides plenty of variety. Otherwise, you would go nuts, nuts in nuts. space. 
come back to Earth, Aaron. Sorry, something's gonna get carried away. This is Carla Wilson, and she's studying how to make different things out of sweet potatoes. So Carla, what are some things you can make out of sweet potatoes? You can make lots of stuff. Here you see on the table lots of sweet potato products. Over here are some of the Asian products made out of the sweet potato. Here we have a sweet potato jello, Ooh. a sweet potato snack chip, and some sweet potato candies. And on this side, we have a lot of products that we're making here at Tuskegee University. That's a sweet potato leaf flour. We took the actual sweet potato leaf, dried it, and ground it in flour. And that's the flour that we got from the root of the actual sweet potato. We dried this and made a flour out of that. And we can make different products from these two flours. Here are sweet potato noodles that we made from the sweet potato green flour. And we can make lots of bread items and cake items from this, uh, the root flour. Here we have cookies and waffles and a cake. And we made a loaf of bread and, of course, our sweet potato drink. That's really cool. Thanks for showing me all this stuff. I had no idea. Well, that's the story from Tuskegee. Now back to you, Kim and Renee. Not so fast. We have work to do. Work? Of course. We need some cookies baked and we need some help. Gee whiz. Aaron. Those cookies sure did look good. I, I didn't know so, so many things would come out of sweet potatoes. Or that they could grow in space. But they're not really growing in space. It's a smaller version of the Earth flying in space. Right. And up there, they're going to have to do what we need to do down here, recycle everything. So the Earth is like a much bigger spaceship. Right. And research that they're doing in space on recycling is going to help us here on Earth to keep us from poisoning ourselves with our own waste and to keep us from running out of food. Because we could use hydroponics on the Earth to grow stuff. That's right. We already do. But that's a whole nother show. So it could be yams for everyone, not just yams in space. You're right. That's cool. Aaron, you've been spaced out an awful lot today. Are you ready to come back to Earth? Follow me. Thanks to all the work scientists have done here on Earth, I could stay up here for years and never get hungry. Though it would help if I had a gardener with me, like Mr. Carol Daly. Hi. Hello, how are you? Fine. So what do you have growing here? Right now we are growing some herbs and we're growing lettuce and we even have some wheat that you could make bread from on a space mission. And what we're doing is showing the application of hydroponics to solving the problem of uh, feeding astronauts on long-term missions. How much harder is it to grow plants in water? It's very simple, as a matter of fact. Uh, you could set up a small system in your kitchen with nothing more than a pan and a styrofoam sheet with holes in it to place uh, seedlings, and uh, you would have an entire hydroponic system. And you have the advantage of not having to worry about weeds or insects. And all you need to do is just uh, add nutrient occasionally, and you'll have a fine crop. So you could do it at home. And you could do it at home very inexpensively. So that's the story. Just me and my yams. What, we could travel to Mars, even Saturn, explore planets the scientists haven't even found yet. We could boldly go where no yam has gone before. Uh, sweet potatoes. Well, I guess that's our cue to pack up our yams, or uh, sweet potatoes and go home. But first, we need to thank our experts, including Dr. Pauline David and Dr. Desmond Mortley. Dr. Audrey Trotman. And Carla Wilson and Carol Daly from the Huntsville Botanical Gardens. Plus, we want to thank NASA for their support. And all our good friends in Alabama. If you're ever in Alabama, you can visit Tuskegee University, the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, 
or the Huntsville Botanical Garden. They all love visitors. Just be sure to tell them that you heard all about Yams in Space, right here on G-Wiz and Agriculture. Mm -hmm.